let's lift our hands to Jesus and thank him for his faithfulness go ahead and bless him call him everything you know him to be call him Savior call him Redeemer call him helper call him restorer call him deliverer call him lifter call him way maker call him the mighty God of Israel go ahead and bless him Lord we magnify you blessed be God forever someone is giving God quality thanks thank you Jesus we bless you because you are God now ask him to speak to you tonight cry unto him and say father let your word come with fire let it come with grace in this final service give me an encounter tonight In Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray the Bible says on the last day of the feast even though it was the last day Jesus said whoever is thirsty is still not too late there is something about last days on the final day of the feast Jesus says whoever thirst you can still come for someone you didn't come in January you didn't come in February up until November even in December you are coming at this final service it is still a feast of fat things for you and God will visit and surprise you in the name of Jesus we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh Yahweh us tonight oh God and let Jesus be glorified for in Jesus mighty and matchless name we pray may God bless you please be seated welcome to our final service for the year 2022 but that is by no means an end to your testimony that is by no means to an, uh, an end to what God is doing in your life. For that which God does endures forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome your neighbor to your left and right in this final service. And tell them it's good to see you 
for some one last time hallelujah praise the name of the lord just to honor a few people um i think we should celebrate our global family one more time every once in a while we bless them is this the best you can do from america to the uk asia south africa kenya ghana everywhere that is not nigeria deserves a round of applause let's give them a big god bless you hallelujah thank you for your connection thank you for your love this is your family and for those of us who are here present the lord bless you and he will do you good in jesus name and then for all our international guests who made their way to this place here tonight the lord bless you we love you we appreciate and we recognize you let's have some of them if you are here and you came from outside nigeria you are an international guest please stand for one last time let's honor you give them a big 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 god bless you hallelujah it's incredible what god does in our midst every week we have literally tens of people from all over the world doesn't matter what service the lord will do you good tonight in jesus name god bless you please be seated just to honor a few um, great men and women in our midst hallelujah it's a joy and pleasure to honor dr doin okupe god bless you sir god bless you thank you so very much appreciate you please be seated and then his excellency the deputy governor of kogi state edward david god bless you sir thank you please be seated Pastor Kester from Goshen, is he here? God bless you, sir. May the Lord honor you, Dr. Kester. Thank you so very much. Oh, I just spotted him. Hallelujah. And then gloriously walked into our midst, Pastor Amos Fenwa, his lovely wife and their team. Let's give them a big, big God bless you, Holy Ghost Christian Center. Is this the best you can do? Give him a resounding koinonia welcome. We honor you, sir. Thank you so very much. And every other person, if I missed your name, um, this is a house of honor. We honor and we love you. Thank you for coming. The Lord will do you good in Jesus' name. Bazanji Soroba Mete Makona Bazanji Kunyaba one more time. Bazenji Soro Bazenji Kunyaba. That is my first prophecy for someone in the name of Jesus. Everything that stands to cause you shame by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let shame be rolled like a curtain. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. For anyone who has asked you where is your God, allow your testimony to bring the answer. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. I hope you believe in the power of prophecy. Yes. It will be unwise to not believe it. I taught you last week or week after, week before, prophecies program spiritual climate over people. It is very, very powerful. For someone in the name of Jesus Christ, this week before the year ends, I declare it your week of strange laughter. Strange laughter. May God do something that has not been done in the 11 months put together. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you sing me that song? Somebody help me. It's a prophetic word for someone tonight.
this is the God that we serve who can visit men anytime God steps in the word too late gets out of the equation too late is relative to the help of man when God steps in may God step in for you I say it again may my God step in for you I don't know which God you believe in but may my God step in for you in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated God bless you I just needed to sometimes God just brings these words and they sound casual but then they have a mysterious ability to lift men hallelujah be sensitive tonight and the Lord will grant us grace let me start tonight by appreciating everyone even though I asked us to clap and celebrate ourselves but I especially want to say thank you um, Romans chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5 is a scripture that just boils in my spirit when um, I communicate my gratitude he said Paul is servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle and separated unto the gospel of God verse 2 we're reading to 5 he says which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scripture he said concerning his son Jesus Christ which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh uh -huh, and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead verse 5 now it says by whom we have received grace and apostleship grace and apostleship it was received is more than a desire we have received grace and apostleship it says for the obedience to the faith among how many nations all this grace and apostleship was mandated to bring nations to the obedience of the faith by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith that is the reason why the grace came that is the reason why the apostleship came that by this grace and the ministry of apostleship will bring the nations to the obedience of the faith hallelujah it was paul i believe before agrippa in acts chapter 26 when we read verse um, what verse is that now let's try 16 I think it should be 16 17 18 he said but rise he was sharing his testimony rise and stand upon your feet for I have appeared unto you he was narrating his experience now for this purpose he says to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto you reading to 18 delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom i now send thee to what end to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith which is in me but how do we receive that inheritance Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 he says and now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified so access to that inheritance happens through knowledge the word of God it first builds up giving you capacity then it gives you an inheritance among them that are sanctified hallelujah I have a charge my assignment is to charge our hearts tonight as we celebrate the hand of God one last time he declared this year for us as a global family to be our year of the marvelous light and indeed we have seen the light of God piercing across every darkness from nigeria to the us the uk across the globe and we give him all the glory in the name of jesus christ my assignment tonight is to charge our hearts one final time for this year as we brace up for the holiday season 
to prepare us to make sure that we make the most of what is available in Christ even at this time we've been called to be light and salt let's start with Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 Jesus was teaching the disciples alongside many who were invited to join his discussion and he said ye are the salt of the earth we have discussed this a number of times it says but if the salt has lost its several in fact let's read it from amplified that hallelujah apologies for that ye are the salt of the earth it says but if the salt has lost its taste its strength its quality how can its saltiness be restored it is not good for anything any longer but to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men so he's he's telling us here that he he likens us to salt and we have discussed extensively in this house that there are a few things we need to know about salt number one that the assignment of salt is to add taste and to preserve is that true every time you introduce salt it is to add taste to food and then to preserve what has been prepared and then the bible says that it is possible for salt to lose its saltiness its quality in fact one of the the version says its purpose it says how can it be salted again it is good for nothing except to be thrown out and underfoot of men we have also discussed in this house that it is never too late to add salt in food hallelujah there are certain ingredients that if you don't add at a certain time you have ruined the entire meal but not salt oh chevrolet franklin did i honor and appreciate you the gospel the gospel musician please stand god bless you the lord bless you all the way from us the jamaican yes the jamaican let's let's give her a big god bless you i just spotted her the lord bless you hallelujah thank you please be seated we love and we honor you my apologies for omitting your name and you you didn't come alone that's your husband please stand sir let's honor you together may the lord bless you thank you so very much we're happy to have you in our midst god bless you hallelujah are we together so the bible says that we are the salt of the earth please pay attention now we are the salt of the earth that means we have a mandate given by god and from god to number one add taste and number two to preserve this is very important and then 14 it says you are the light of the world this is very powerful you are likened to a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden that means visibility is everyone's heritage in christ visibility is everyone's heritage in christ you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden 15 says neither do men light a lamp and put it under let's go back to kjv under a bushel it says but a candlestick but it gives light to all those who are in the house the instruction now is in verse 16 it says let your light so shine someone says so shine prophesy to yourself so shine that means there is a way it can shine that men do not see it he's saying it should shine to an extent that men will see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven the entire purpose of the believer is to reveal and glorify Jesus Christ we have established this it is an anthem in this ministry that every other thing in your life finds its relevance from its ability to contribute to the revelation and the glorification of the Christ in the realm of the spirit value is measured with respect to the revelation and the glorification of jesus let me repeat myself in the realm of the spirit value is measured with respect to the revelation and the glorification of the christ that means anything at all is of quality only to the degree to which it's it is a, it's able to reveal and glorify jesus whether it is skill 
wealth, beauty, grace, influence, impact, whatever it is. That means no matter what it is that you have, it is small and can even be valueless in the realm of the spirit if it does not sustain the ability to reveal and to glorify Jesus. Hallelujah. That means that at the back of everything we have and at the back of everything we are, please listen attentively, at the back of everything we have and at the back of everything we are, it must be that our principal objective is to reveal Jesus. You've listened to my teachings and I've taught on my concept of ministry. That ministry has nothing to do with the pulpit. Ministry has nothing to do with holding a mic and communicating to a congregation. No. Ministry in the spirit is not defined by the activities. Ministry is defined by the motivation and the goal. It is not the spirituality of the activity that defines ministry. It is the motivation. Any activity that is motivated by your love for Jesus, your love for people, and intended to reveal and glorify Jesus is called ministry. Even if that is pregnancy, even if that is business, even if that is marriage, even if that is cooking. It is not the religiosity of an activity that makes it ministry. I can preach here before this activity is called ministry there has to be a two-fold system of vetting number one the intent behind my heart if the motive behind my heart is not the love for jesus and the love for his people it's not ministry it can be preaching but not ministry then number two the goal must be ultimately to reveal Jesus, not just to reveal the man of God, not just to reveal intelligence, although all the aforementioned will be revealed on the way to revealing Jesus. But ultimately, it's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God and I surrender. One more time. This is all about you. Jesus and all this is for you. For your glory and your fame, it's not about me. As if you should do things my way, you alone are God. I surrender. For someone, this right here is a message for you that you need to re-edit your passions and your motivations. There is no problem with the activity. Your activity is excellent from the standpoint of men, except that it does not carry any weight in the spirit because it is not motivated by genuine love for God and people. Take note, if you love God alone, you are a hypocrite. You must love God and love people. It is impossible to love God and not love men because it is from the abundance of that love that you communicate that vertical and horizontal dimension must be captured I love God and I hate men you do not love him it says how can we say we love God whom we have not seen if you hate your brother that you see is that true so when you say you are a ministry let it not be because you preach well you may be wrong let it not be because you sing well you may be wrong let it not be because you are around a living church you may be wrong ministry is defined by two biblical indices number one your love for jesus and your love for people i don't want to say god because god means many things your love for jesus and your love for people and then number two that behind whatever you do whether it's prophesying collecting offerings singing playing the instrument that you desire to see jesus revealed and glorified you are in ministry Are we learning? So the Bible calls us light and then it calls us salt. 
and i have taught you here that theologically speaking believers are classified in twofold number one according to our spiritual identity and then number two according to our function and assignment believers are basically classified according to scripture in twofold number one our identity so he calls us joint heirs with christ hallelujah he calls us sons of god he says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in that we be called sons of god he says now are we the sons of god and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like the bible calls us co-heirs joint heirs with christ and co-heirs with god is that true yes but then when it has to do with our function within the earth the cosmos he now begins to use names like witnesses he begins to use names like ambassadors an ambassador is one who is mandated to protect the interest and the integrity of the nation that he represents that means the ambassador has no assignment in a foreign nation except to watch for and to defend the interest of his nation is that true then he calls us witnesses he calls us battle axes several other names that attempt to define the believer based on function and tonight my my assignment is to give us a final instruction the word instruction is very important for many of us we know instructions to mean commands and so we fight it because we take it as an attempt to downplay your pedigree why should you give me an instruction but instructions are very powerful because if and when they are done in righteousness and in love they guide us with precision and exactitude into the place of destiny when you drive you can maneuver you can have opinions but when you fly they call those who train pilots instructors not drivers because in the air, you are not given the liberty to guess your way around. It's too risky. You may not have a second chance. Are we together? So those who train pilots are not called drivers. Those who train pilots are not even called coaches. They are called instructors because we fly by instruction. He says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, he says. He says, they are life to those who find them. And remember, the law is who, everyone that seeketh, findeth. If you do not seek, there is no finding. And health, it says, to their flesh. Hallelujah. I'm going to be giving us five prophetic instructions that i believe the lord placed in my heart and then we'll have the impartation and we'll wrap up for tonight i want you to please pay attention write every one of them down these are the instructions that if we keep in righteousness and by the grace of god there is a guarantee that not only our break but even 2023 would start on a good note most times because believers are bankrupt of prophetic instructions we tend to abort that which we have spent time even the whole year building you can imagine someone who have spent all the time building laboring and then because of carelessness you lose everything god is alpha omega he does not start and leave it there he starts and finishes are we together instruction number one this is god's word to us as a global family and then it extends to the body of christ number one give yourself continually to the word and prayer please write it down give yourself continually to the word and prayer acts chapter 6 and verse 4 this is the first prophetic instruction god is giving us that if we are to be light and salt indeed even whilst we're on the break and you know all through our christian experience it's important for us to understand that we must give ourselves continually to the word and to prayer in acts chapter 6 verse 4 this was the counsel of the apostles they said but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word are we together 
give yourself continually to prayer and the word in first timothy chapter 4 from verse 15 and 16 first timothy chapter 4 15 and 16 it says meditate upon these things give yourself wholly to them give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all. Your profiting will never appear unto all when you take casual spiritual things. The matters of the word, the matters of prayer. You must meditate upon these things. There are some these things you have learned throughout this year. It says you have a responsibility. In fact, the Bible says to give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. That means it is your responsibility to stop men from doubting the validity of your Christian experience. Are we together? Yeah. So number one, give yourself continually to the word and to prayer. Very quickly. Number two, what is the second instruction that God is giving us? Number two, invest in your health and your well-being. Invest in your health and your well-being. All through this break and for the rest of your life, invest in your health and well-being. I put in bracket rest. R-E-S-T. Please write it. Isn't it amazing that rest can be an instruction? Rest. In Genesis chapter 2 and 2 and 3, Genesis chapter 2, 2 and 3, a scripture that delivered me years ago, and on the seventh day, God ended his work. That means if you are lazy, you are not like God. Please look up. This is a message already for someone. The Bible says, even though God owns all things, it was not an excuse for laziness. How can the creator still be walking? The Bible says on the seventh day, God ended his walk, which he had made. And he rested. And he rested. And he rested. God rested. On the seventh day from all his walk, which he had made. Verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work. Can I tell you? Rest, medical science tells us that rest is therapeutic. There are many people who have died today not because of demons. It is the absence of the understanding of the laws of life. Are we together now? Spirituality, if not tampered with wisdom, can lead a man to destruction especially in africa we pride in a lot of fanatism without the boundary that wisdom brings and we stretch ourselves not knowing that we are still bound in this mortal body and we do that to our detriment there are people today collapsing left right and center you see the thing about health as i have learned is that the consequences are not seen immediately it usually accumulates one upon another. If in your 40s you start having a health problem, chances are excellent. It is the cumulative effect of carelessness from right from early 20s. Just because you are careless with your body and you wake up fine does not mean you are all right. Are we together? Give yourself continually to word and prayer and then invest in your health. In Mark chapter 4 from verse 38, very powerful scripture. Mark 4, 38. Apostle, you are saying I should rest. It's because you don't know the fire that is on my mountain. The Bible says, and as he was in the hinder part, the he being Jesus of the sheep, asleep on a pillow. In fact, let's do 37. Let's start from 37. The Bible says the disciples were going to the other side and there arose a great storm of wind. Is that in your Bible? And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. What happened to Jesus? And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. What details? You can rest in the midst of storms. Don't give me an excuse that because the, there are storms, you do not rest. Jesus showed us that even in the midst of storms. I will soar with you above the clouds. Father, you are king over the storm. And I will be still and you are God. My 
soul be still. Sing it one more time for me. When the ocean rolls. So right now, if I if I have a way of getting, even if it's a small bag of rice, I will be the happiest person. Rest. Rest is not all about closing your eyes. You can close your eyes and still be awake. I hope you know that. In fact, there is a there is a skill of worry that happens only when your eyes are closed because then your imagination is alive. Rest. Even though I'm talking about your health, it extends to every... Let me tell you this. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. It's in your Bible. Except the Lord builds a house. It says they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. It says the watchmen watch it but in vain. That it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. But here is a gift many of us have not received. But he giveth his beloved. So rest and sleep is a gift. You have accepted anointing. When God stretches his hands, collect everything that comes from him. Rest is a gift that also comes from him. He giveth his beloved sleep. Hallelujah. Invest in your health as a commitment to your longevity. I have charged you here. I do not believe that medical science is, is an interruption to faith. Faith is a journey and believers grow and transit. There is a level of divine health in experience. But while we are transiting to that dimension, we thank God for the gift and the blessings of medical science that midwife our health while we keep transiting. Do not feel embarrassed to seek the attention of medical science you are sick and you pray and it does not work please go and don't be discouraged there are many people who just paying attention to a doctor's report can can bring to end many needless prayer points prophesy to yourself say rest say my soul find rest my body find rest you know we speak to our souls and we leave our bodies find rest is someone learning already take it as an instruction rest when you close your door don't just say i'm praying you when you are done praying rest there are times you can lie down quietly this is one of the reasons why in spite of the blessing of the lord especially upon africa it looks like you know statistic tells us that the the average lifespan i don't know if it's if i've not verified the latest but i think it was about 48 or there about you know um some time back minus me In the name of jesus christ he says with long life shall i satisfy you and show you my salvation but you must rest so use this opportunity to rest use this opportunity to rest number three invest in building and maintaining your relationships this is the third prophetic instruction invest in building and maintaining your relationships ecclesiastes chapter 4 please from verse 9 and 10 invest in building and maintaining your relationships the bible declares without confusion that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor verse 10 it says for if they fall one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone when he falleth for he hath not another to help him up men don't just stand up they are helped to go up subscribe to be inspired turn on notifications and leave a like comment and share to help the spread the gospel. Thank you for watching.